Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Friday, October the 29th. This would be Halloween Eve Eve, right? <laughs> Halloween Eve Eve. I think that's right. It's the Halloween uh, season. Larry Brown is with us. Good to have you here, Larry Brown. Thank you. Good to be here. I'm, we said that uh, you were going to do a scary Halloween story, but then you said, well, of well course. It, modestly. Modestly scary yeah, Halloween yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it have a name? The House at the End of the Street. Okay, so here is Larry Brown with a modestly scary Halloween story called The House at the End of the Street. Now, all the kids in town knew that that house was haunted. I mean, they'd heard the stories of, of the ghosts of, of mass murderers and cannibalistic witches. And, and all of the kids had their own stories of how they'd been frightened about their encounters. Well, that house had been abandoned for a lot of years. And, of course, there was estate problems and poor record keeping and devaluing of the property. And it was at the edge of town, right at the city limits and not on the main thoroughfare. And, and the little creek behind the house, the woods were kind of growing as if it was encircling that house and just adding to the kind of ghostly aura of the place, particularly on moonlit nights. And so, as I said, all of the kids knew that house was haunted. And it was sort of the, maybe the tradition that the older kids would challenge the younger kids and said, I dare you to go some night to the house. Well, it so happened that that particular fall, Bernie and his best friend Scrub were indeed challenged by some older junior high kids to go to that house. Well, they had to think about it for a few days, but finally decided they could do it at night. Now, for kids their age to get away at night, that took some maneuvering with the parents, but they finally came up with this plan that they were going to be riding their bikes around town at sun sundown, and, and it was okay. And, of course, to their disappointment, Bernie's little sister, Ruth, wanted to go along too, and the parents said she has to. Well, she was just as eager to explore that house and scared as they were. And so that particular evening, they rode their bikes over to the house, parked them outside, walked up toward the house just as it was getting dark, flashlights in hand. And of course, they were hearing <coughs> all those sounds that they couldn't attribute to the local cats and dogs or the wind, that there was mysterious sounds. And as they approached the house and began to enter it, all of a sudden, Ruthie let out a muffled scream. <coughs> Bernie was grabbing scrub as a wild-haired, white-haired woman just rushed by them and apparently into the house. And there was a flickering of lights, and, and Bernie was saying to scrub, you go in first. He said, no, you go in first. Finally, Ruth said, oh, we'll go in together. And as they went into the house, then again, there was a scream. It was Ruthie. And they all screamed and ran out of the house as that wild-haired woman came rushing by them and disappeared into the dark. Well, as they got back to the bikes and got their breath, and they were saying, we saw her. We saw a ghost. We saw the ghost of a woman. And they were so excited the next day to report to their friends that they'd gone there at night and experienced a ghost. And, and then when Bernie told their story, the older kids just laughed and said, yeah, but you didn't see the shadow man. And now they thought, the trio, oh, no, we've encountered whatever this was, a witch or a ghost or whatever it was, and now there's something else. Now we have to go back. But Scrub had a plan. He said, no, we'll go back to that house, but in the daytime. And that Saturday they did. And so the three of them arrived at the house, and as they were coming up to the house, they were met by a little kid, a kid younger than I, and said, hi, my name's Freddie. I heard you were wanting to check out this house. Well, I knew all about it. Come on in, I'll show you around. And this little kid took them into the house. Now, they were a bit reluctant to accept the invitation of a little kid, but he showed them around. Of course, it wasn't long that Bernie and Scrub were both asking the critical questions. Have you seen the wild woman or the shadow man? He says, oh, yeah, but I don't think they're bad. They don't bother me. Well, after a while, then they had to pop the other question. But have you been at the house at night. He says, oh yeah, no problem. You want to come at night? Uh, maybe. He said, well, let's arrange for a night. And of course, Bernie wanted to say, let's arrange it at school. And then Freddie says, well, no, I don't think it's school. We don't want anyone else knowing about it. He says, I'll watch for you and meet you there. Well, they did figure out a night they could go again to the house. And this time when they went, Freddie appeared. And he said, shh, now you got to be quiet. 
I think the shadow man's already there, and the old woman will be here soon. So they went to a room where they could look into this larger room and hushed. And sure enough, that old woman appeared, and she seemed to be talking with the shadow man and, and handed him something. And then sh she was gone. And Freddy says, quiet, we'll sneak out later. And they did. And Freddy then said, thank you, and headed off. Well, as they got back to their bicycles, Ruthie says, you know, I think I've seen that woman somewhere else before. You mean she's not a ghost? I think she's the old woman with the big house and the garden that I sometimes see crawling around in her garden over on Maple Street. Well, we got to find out. And sure enough, the next day after school, they were over there, and sure enough, there was this woman as if it was all planned with the wild white hair crawling around. And Ruthie went up and says, excuse me, could we talk to you about the, about the house? She kind of looked up and says, what house? Well, well, the house at the end of the street where we thought we saw you the other night. Well, come up on the porch. And they went up on the porch and she explained that indeed there was a young man from Honduras hiding in that house. That she'd encountered him once when she was looking for wildflowers in the woods. And she was taking care of him, bringing him stuff, food and clothing and doing laundry. She said, I've got friends, they're going to help him out. And the kid says, well, can we help too? And she says, well, not yet. I'll tell you when. Well, they wanted to tell Freddie, of course, and so the next day at school, Bernie went down to the superintendent's office and talked to the, to the secretary to find out what grade Freddie was in, and she said, well, we only have two Freds in the school, one's in junior high and one's in high school, and we don't have a Freddie. And as Bernie was leaving, he was met by old Mr. Peterson, the custodian, who said, I heard you were asking about a Freddie. Well, there's no Freddie anymore, but years ago there was. His family lived in the house at the end of the road. But, you know, they moved years ago after Freddy was mysteriously killed down on the creek. And as Bernie walked away with his eyes open and his mouth open saying, Oh, no, we're going to have to have another adventure at the house at the end of the road. Ah, that's a good story, Larry. Now, is this a true story or is this from your imagination? This is a fantasy. It's but what? you it's a fantasy. But you know that all of my stories have some sort of oh, connection know. to reality. I know. The house I lived in in town <laughs> for years. Uh, the kids in the neighborhood said it was haunted and they used to dare each other to go over and touch yes. the front door of yes. the haunted house. Always is the case. Yes. And I heard <laughs> things in that house. I heard things in that house at nighttime. Larry Brown, for more information, real quick, how they get in touch Brown with you. Brownstory at Hotmail.com. Brownstory Hotmail.com. Thank you, Larry. Sure.